better than before? Okay, awesome. Um, so Leland, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get out these materials right here. Just a bowl of water, your metal sifter. It might look different from this, but it's just gonna be metal um, strainer like this. And then also the fossil bag from your kit. Small bag of sand. All right, and just give me a thumbs up when you got everything. There's the fossil bag. Yep, and then you'll need a sifter or strainer. If yours might also look like this one, put up two different types. It's almost perfect. What is that one? All right. Could be down in the bottom here. This is what it also could look like, Leland. We've got two different types in the bags. You could have this one if you don't have the one with the handle. The second one is in your sink. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a strainer. So um, some people will use these. This is actually designed for a sink plug. So if you don't have one in your bag, you actually could use the one that you have in your kitchen for this activity. Um, you're just gonna need a metal strainer of some sort. Yeah. Yay! Good morning, everybody. So glad to see you again. If you want to go ahead and get uh, looking for the items for number one today, our first activity. Um, we've got the materials you need right here on Mr. Owl. You're going to need one bowl of water. Doesn't have to be a big bowl of water, just a little bit of water here. You're going to need your fossil bag from your kit and one of the strainers that are in your kit as well. Should be, it'll either look like this strainer here or it'll look like this one here. Your fossil bag, a strainer, and a bowl of water. That's all you need today, or for right now. Oh, Leland, you found it. Awesome. Make sure you got that bowl of water. Give you guys some time to find those. The fossil bag is a small, heavy bag full of sand. Because it's heavy, it also could be down in the bottom of your bag, like some of our other small bags have been.
All right, welcome back, Leland. You got your bowl of water? All right, awesome. We'll give everyone else just another minute to get their stuff and then we'll get started with our first activity. Perfect, that's a good size bowl. Oh, we got Tiana waiting to join us. Welcome, Tiana. Good morning. Must have been a rough Thursday night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's coming in a little late today. Ah, uh, that's all right. It's Friday. I'm just glad to see you guys here. So, Tiana, um, I don't know if you heard you're just going to want a bowl of water, one of the strainers that are in your bag, your junior keeper's bag, and your fossil bag, too. That's all you're going to need at first. All right. Honor, do you have everything that you need for this activity? Yes, okay, great. So I'll just wait one more moment. <laughs> All right. So what we are going to be doing in this first activity is fossil sifting. Um, have any of you guys ever been fossil sifting or heard of fossil sifting before? No? Yes? You've heard of it? You've never been and done it? Okay, so fossil sifting, um, you can also, you can do fossil sifting, there's also um, gem sifting, uh, but if you've ever been like up in the mountains at all, there's a lot of places uh, called gem mines where you buy a bucket or a bag of sand, you put it in this big sifter, put it down into the water, and then um, you find all of the gems and sometimes fossils that they've put into that bucket for you. Um, this is you can do that at the shell factory. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can also, um, we do have a small uh fossil mining setup here at the IMAX. If you want to do the whole thing with the tray and the little river of running water, you can do that here when you come to visit. Um, but what you're gonna do uh, for this, we're just gonna use this small fossil bag today. This is sort of like a mini version of what you could buy here or if you went to a place that has fossil mining. Um, but basically it's just a bag of sand with fossils already put inside for you to find. So anytime you buy these, you're guaranteed to find um, a fossil of some sort. Uh, so this is just your fossil bag. You are going to take your fossil bag and your strainer, whichever type of strainer that you've got, and it's probably best to do this a little bit at a time. You don't want to dump all of your sand in at once. You're just going to pour some of that sand into your strainer, just like I've done there. And then when you put it down in the water, the water is going to knock that sand through the holes. And it's a little hard to see. My sifter doesn't have as much sand anymore and I'm starting to see some fossils come out. So you'll just keep shaking it around until you get out enough of that sand. And then you can pull out your fossils. So just in this little scoop, I have three shark's teeth. I'll come show them to the camera. Oh, we're gonna zoom in. So we've got 
three shark's teeth right here. And then you'll just keep sifting until you've gone through everything. And you might want to have a paper towel nearby or something to set your wet fossils onto. Oh, I've got another two. So you can go ahead, go through your bag, see what you find. Leland, I see you've got a shark's tooth already. That's awesome. I will say um, fossil sifting is something that you can go to a place and pay to do. But fossil hunting is actually very big here in Florida. Uh, Florida doesn't have a lot of gems underneath our ground just because of what our rock ben is beneath us. It's a lot of limestone. It doesn't make things like rubies, emeralds, or anything like that. Um, we do have some geodes that you can find, but mostly you're looking for fossils in Florida. So there's a lot of places that you can go to with your family for just like a fun day. Uh, and actually fossil hunt for free. You just take a sifter, just like this one. Um, some people take their, uh, what is it called? Um, drainers for like their pasta. They take it out there with them uh, and then they can find real fossils. So we just put in the chat, the Peace River in Arcadia is one of the best places in the world to find fossilized shark's teeth. Um, basically the geology of Florida really, really long time ago we were mostly underwater. And then as our state kind of came out of the water as the sea levels uh, lowered, there was a part of our state in central Florida right around Arcadia that was a huge river and it was called the Peace River. It still is called the Peace River, but it's a little smaller. But back when it was really big, the Peace River was actually a nursery for megalodons. So megalodons are obviously those huge sharks that we used to have swimming in our oceans, uh, and they've got huge teeth. So you can find really, really big fossilized uh, shark's teeth and also megalodon teeth in the Peace River. Oh, that is a great fossil piece that you found right there. So the Peace River is actually a place that I personally like to go on the weekends. I have a couple of kayaks and I go out um, on a Saturday and I will dig in the river all day to see what kind of fossils I can find. And I don't know if you would have noticed it from far away, but every single day I have worn this shark's tooth right here. So I'll come and show it to you guys. Right there. This is actually a fossilized megalodon tooth that I found myself in the Peace River. So I didn't pay any money at all for this shark's tooth. I just went out there on a Saturday, had some sandwiches, dug around for a little bit, and I found this shark's tooth. So if it's something that you enjoy doing, there's a lot of opportunities for it here in Florida. So keep going through your fossil kits that we gave you here. You'll find some pretty cool things, some tinier shark's teeth. You'll also find some ray mouth plates in there. Uh, if you want to know what you've got after you've gone through everything, that's a nice shark's tooth, um, you're, you do have in your bag, let me see where I put mine. In your bags, you do have a fossil ID chart. So I'll go ahead and pull mine out. This is what it looks like. If you come to the iMag and you purchase one of the fossil bags that we have here, they're bigger than this one, we will uh, have these charts for you to look at. So this will actually help you identify what's in your bag. Like I'm looking at it now, all of the shark's teeth that I found in my bag so far are sand shark teeth. Uh, and it says that they are warm water sharks that hunted at night. So you can learn a lot about what you actually have in your kit. I'm gonna keep sipping. Oh, it looks like I've got something big in mine. Oh. So I just got a big rock of some sort. Let's see. That's not. Flint. Flint. Nice. Cool. So there's a lot of different things you can find in here. If you find anything that's not on the fossil ID sheet that we gave you um, in your free time today, go ahead and search it up on Google. Um, I find a lot of rocks and fossils and things when I go out to the Peace River myself 
that. I have no idea what they are, but there are a ton of resources online uh, where you can look at pictures, make comparisons, and see exactly what you've got uh, in your bags. All right. So who is finished with their fossil bag? Are we still all working on it? I think we're all still working on it. Yeah, we'll give you guys just a little bit more time to do that. Let me have our next activity. My mesh is so fine. Let's see. Honor, you're done. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, that is the rest of my fossil kit. So, in mine, I got quite a few shark's teeth. I also found some crinoid stems, which is um, let me see here. It actually says it's often called a sea lily, though it was an animal. So I believe that those are remnants from a sort of uh, worm-like animal from long ago. But if you want to know more about the things that you see here on your sheet and the things that you found in your bag, um, I will tell you Google is definitely your best friend. There's a lot of awesome resources online for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put my fossil sifting stuff to the side. And those of you that are finished, I'm going to change the sign here on our owl friend. This is what you're going to need for our next activity. So for our next activity, you are going to need the Friday number one bag. Woo, Amber, I love Amber. So you're going to need the Friday number one bag. It's got black paper, um, clear nail polish, and a silver sharpie. And you're also going to need a pair of scissors and a shallow pan of water. Um, if you don't have a pan, probably what would work best is maybe like a, a baking sheet. If your family has one of those, um, you also can use a big plate. Oh, Tiana, you have, let me see if it's on here you have an ammonite. So that is a spiral shaped sea animal. So they could be as small as one and a half inches to up to six feet wide. So you've got one there that's a couple inches. That's pretty cool. Very nice. A lot of different things in these bags for sure. If you go out into Florida to look for fossils ever, you'll find a lot of shark's teeth, you'll find megalodon teeth, um, you'll also find uh, whale bones. So personally, I have found whale ribs and vertebrae in the Peace River before. Um, you can also find a horse teeth. There's a lot of really cool different things that you can find here um, in Florida for sure. So we just posted a question in the chat. Why are sea animal bones found in the ground here in Florida? Why do you guys think that is? Why are we finding sea animals in the middle of our state of Florida? Does anyone have a guess? It used to be underwater, yes. So. Here uh, in Florida, we're a peninsula, so we are surrounded by water on three sides. That means if there is any change in the sea level of the oceans around us, um, we're going to see that change on our landmass. So a really long time ago, uh, our state was actually mostly underwater. There may have been a point where it was completely underwater. Um, and when we were mostly underwater, that meant that sea animals were swimming around all over our land. So you can find these um, fossils in places that aren't necessarily underwater today. 
Um, there's also, like I said a little bit earlier, the Peace River used to be a huge river that took up a large portion of the state. So even though the river is a lot smaller today, you can actually hunt on the land around it if you have permission from the people who own the land. Um, and you can still find fossils even out where the cows are eating the grass and they're not in the river at all anymore. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and put our fossils and our fossil bags away. You're going to want to get out what we need for the next activity. Um, like I said, it's Friday bag number one got black paper, a silver sharpie, and some clear nail polish. And then you're also going to need one shallow pan with water in it. So you just need about half an inch of water. Mine's hard to see here, but I've got just about half an inch of water there in that pan. Yes, absolutely, Shamaria. When they died in the ocean, they would go down to what used to be the bottom of the ocean, uh, got covered with dirt, and now that Florida is out of the water, we can find those bones and fossils here in our dirt. So I'm going to move Mr. Owl back over here so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So our next activity is called nanofilms. Um, it's actually a really cool activity to do. You can make some really cool um, bookmarks and drawings with this. Once you find your Friday number one bag, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take out the construction paper, marker, and nail polish that's inside. Your nail polish should be in a plastic container with you know, it's going to be packaged. Go ahead and just take that out. And then again, you're going to need a plate or shallow bowl of water. And when you have everything, give me either a thumbs up or a smiley face in the chat. I got it, something like that, so I can know. Honor's all good. Okay, great. Leland, is that a thumbs up? Oh, okay, good, no problem. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you how to do this activity because we have a few more things I wanna get to today. If you do not have all of the materials in front of you right now, do not worry, you do not have to keep looking. Just uh, watch how I do it here and then you can do it later on and you can actually take your time with your art then. So you're gonna have a full size sheet of construction paper in the bag. I have already um, cut mine and made something for you. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is making something called nanofilms. So what we are going to be doing, show you a little comparison. This is what a regular piece of construction paper looks like when I hold it up to the light. We are going to be doing this. See that rainbow sort of that's on that butterfly there? We're going to be adding a very, 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 very thin layer of clear nail polish over our drawings on this black construction paper and creating a nanofilm. And it's called a nanofilm because the film is actually only nanometers thick. So it's super, super, super tiny. So what you're going to do uh, is you're going to cut your construction paper. I'm going to make a bookmark. So it'll probably be easiest to just cut a rectangle off of my paper here. And then I'm going to use our silver Sharpie here to um, draw something that I like or actually I'll just write my name because I'm going to use this as a bookmark. So I want to be able to use it for a long time. All right. So I added my name to the bookmark, got a little drawing there. And the silver Sharpie already has a little bit of a shine to it. So it's gonna look really nice when we put the nanofilm over it. 
Now this part is the important part. So I would definitely watch how we do this here. Let me get some of this out of here. So what you're gonna do when you have your pan of water set up and you have everything in front of you, um, which again, you can do this later on if you'd like, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and put your piece of black construction paper into the water. And I know that sounds silly because now it's going to get wet, but it's going to dry, I promise. Well, actually, this over here. And once you have your drawing and your paper under the water, you're going to use the clear nail polish and you're going to just drop a few drops over the surface. So if you look really closely, and I have a lot of um, bright lights in here so I can see it good. When you drop that clear nail polish in there, you get this really thin film over the cross the top of the water. So you can kind of see it. That's not how water usually shines. And then when you lift up your drawing, you can see the nano film over my bookmark. So those rainbows there, that is created by the clear nail polish. So I'm just gonna put my bookmark over here on my paper towel to dry. And it just takes a little bit. It'll dry faster if you put it in a sunny place. Uh, and then once it dries, it's gonna look like that butterfly that I showed you just a second ago. So you can make a lot of really cool things with this. And I usually just recommend that after you've done it, before you put another piece of paper into the water, if you have any chunks of film left in there, you're gonna wanna either get them out or just scrape them to the side so that they don't mess up your next picture that you put in there. So that is our nanofilm activity. You know, a couple of you guys are working on it. Ooh, Leland, that is very cool. I do not know what that is that you have there. All right. So who is doing the nano activity right now? Tiana, it looks like you are making the bookmarks and stuff. Not done, all right, no problem. Give you guys just a little bit longer to work on that. They're really cool and the thing is, uh, if you use up all of your construction paper, you've got a full bottle of clear nail, clear nail polish here with you. So you can make as many of these as you would like. Um, you also can try doing it on different colored paper. Um, it's a lot easier to see on the black paper, but if you do it on green, yellow, blue, you might get a really pretty effect that you like there too. So since you guys are still working, I'll go ahead and make myself another butterfly. And when you're dripping the clear nail polish in, you just want to undo the cap and just drip from the brush that's here. So you'll just hold it over and let it drip. If you pour, you're probably going to pour a lot more than you would drip with the little brush. So I'm making another one. Just a reminder, you put your construction paper in the water first. And then you just drip a couple drips of clear nail polish into the water. And it'll make that film for you. And 
And then when you take it out, you're just gonna take it out real carefully. And it might, uh, you might see some film around the edges and stuff. You don't wanna pull that out um, or you don't wanna pull it off too quickly before it dries because you'll pull it off of your drawing. So just leave any extra on for a little bit while it dries. And then see like I have a lot of extra film on that one. I'll just wait till later and cut all of that extra off. Oh, I ran out of paper towels. These would probably look really good if you have a spot in your bedroom that has a window. Um, you could hang them in front of the window and you can see the sunlight on them. Um, they look a lot better in sunlight than they do um, in inside light. Uh, you also could just put it, you know, in a nice place as a decoration on your wall because they're pretty cool. Whenever you finish yours, I'd like to see what you've got, see how they turned out. Oh, that's a lot of film. Oh, that's another important thing. Be careful with your nail polish. You don't want to spill this anywhere. That it would be hard to get up later. All right, Honor, are your nano films finished? I'd like to see them. Oh, very nice. You can see the film that's all over it. You did a good job. And you'll just probably want to set it in a sunny place so that it'll dry nice and quick for you and you can use it in a book. Oh, Tiana, is that some of the film off of the water? It gets kind of gross. That's why you always want to clean off the water before you dip your next drawing in that clumpy stuff will get on top of it. And that's just uh, the clear nail polish, just all taken off of the top. All right, I'll give you guys one more minute and then we're going to move on to our next activity of the day. So go ahead and finish up the part you're working on now. And of course, as soon as we're finished with our call, you can keep making these all day. We just have more things to show you. If you have created a nanofilm already and you are ready to move on, you're going to want to get out 
Friday activity number oops, two. Activity number two has a tiny pie pan in it, some yarn, and lots of colorful beads. So go ahead and finish up your nano films. Put that stuff to the side. You can keep working on it later and grab your Friday activity number two bag. The small bag, the pie pan, and some beads there in the bottom. out of the way. All right. When you've got Friday number two, go ahead and show it to the camera for me. This one's actually one of my favorites. And I'll show you how to do it before we finish our call today. All right, Honor, I see you've got it there. You're also going to want a pencil or something that's pointy because we're going to poke some holes in our pie pan. Pencil is probably the safest thing to grab. All right. Okay, so if you are still working on the nano films, just go ahead and put those to the side for a moment and watch how I do this activity and then you can get back to it. Friday activity number two is actually making a butterfly feeder. So um, butterflies are very important to our ecosystem in a lot of different ways. Um, and one thing that they have to deal with a lot is not being able to find a lot of food, uh, especially here in Florida in our hot summer. So um, butterflies do typically eat um, the nectar from plants and flowers that we have here in Florida. So um, we've got a few famous flowers that butterflies really like. One is called milkweed. Um, it's pretty popular in Florida gardens. Um, if you wanted to see more butterflies in your yard, you can always encourage the adults in your home to plant some milkweed outside for the butterflies to eat. But if they can't do that, or you just wanna make a butterfly feeder, this is a really easy way to do it. So you've got a little pie pan in your activity bag. All you're gonna wanna do first with that is take your pencil and poke three holes in your, or actually four holes into the sides of your pie pan. And what you're doing is you're actually creating a hole to hang some string from. So you'll poke one on one side, one right across from it. With a sharper pencil, it's easier to do. And then you're gonna do the same. So you're basically making like a square with these holes. There we go. Once you have the four holes punched, so we've got, whoop, let me go down, one right here, one right across from it. I've got one here and one here. So four holes equally spaced apart on the pie pan. Now you are going to have to measure and cut your string to actually hang the um, feeder. So an easy way to do it is just to take the yarn that's in your bag and fold it in half, just like this, and cut it at the halfway point. So right in this loop, I'm just gonna slide my scissors in and cut it in half. Now, what you're going to do is attach it to the pie pan. So if you want just the plain yarn, you can just tie the plain yarn to this, but we did give you guys some beads so that you can actually decorate your planter. So the best way to add the beads on is to tie one side of the yarn to one of the holes, and that's just gonna keep it in place. Oops. 
Okay, mine tied. So I tied it, oh, came right off. I tied a little better than that. I'll double tie mine. Maybe then it'll stay on a little better. All right. So now you've got the yarn tied to one of the holes in the pie pan. And now I'm just going to add some beads to it. So you can do a pattern if you'd like. You can just add the beads in any random order. It's totally up to you how you do it. I'm going to make a little pattern. And if your yarn is making it hard for you to put the beads on, you can always just wet the tip of it a little bit. That way it'll stay together. So I'm going to do a little pattern of pink, white, and teal. And the way that you're going to bead this Whatever you put on one side, you're going to basically put it all to this one side. So uh, I've got the beads that are going to go on the, what's my left hand side here, and also the beads that are going to go on the right hand side. So whenever I tie it to the other side, I can just move those beads right over and I'll show you that. So I've got my beads all on one side. I'm just gonna take half of them and move them right over to the other. So now I've got some beads decorating my butterfly feeder. You can decorate it however you'd like. You can add as many strings as you'd like. You can make the strings as long or as short as you'd like. Um, but the important part is that you hang it somewhere outside near plants or trees that butterflies can eat from it. Now, uh, when you are putting butterfly food in, obviously we're humans, we can't really make nectar ourselves, uh, but we can make food that is very similar to the food that they eat. Um, one way to do that is to make sugar water. Uh, sugar water is definitely not good <laughs> for humans to drink all of the time, so that's a lot of sugar, but basically you just mix sugar and water together and pour a little bit of that in the pan. Uh, when the butterflies come over to drink, they're gonna sip that water right up. You also can put fruit in the water for natural sugars too. And we do have a question in the chat. Why are the colored beads important to this activity? Why do we need the colored beads on this pie pan for our butterflies? Why do we think colorful beads would be helpful on a butterfly feeder? And we do have a hint. That hint is what are butterflies attracted to? Colorful flowers, absolutely. So butterflies, when they're looking for food, they're looking for those colorful flowers that we've got planted in our garden. So by adding the beads to the side of this pie pan, you are telling them, hey, there's something colorful over here, which might be something that you find yummy and that you could use uh, to fuel yourself. So um, that's why it's best to put the beads on. But again, you could do it however you'd like. If you want to do a pattern, you know, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna add the beads to my next one. And this time I'm just gonna add them all crazy. I don't care about a pattern here. All right. And then, of course, just like before, you tie it to the other side. All right, 
says I'm connected now. Not seeing, not reacting. Here we go. Okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So what I was saying, if you have anything else in front of you right now, you are going to want to push it over to the side and get out Friday number three. This is definitely the best one yet. Friday number three. Inside of Friday number three, it's a little hard to see with the glare, we have a paper cup, a bendy straw, and a little cup full of sugar. That is what is inside Friday number three. Go ahead and get all of that out. Again, it's a bag with a paper cup, a bendy straw, and a little cup of sugar. If you've already found it, go ahead and take everything out of the bag, put it in front of you. All right, give just another moment. All right, so this activity is actually called Sip Like a Butterfly. So uh, we did just talk about making a butterfly feeder and what we can feed butterflies in that feeder to make them happy. Now we actually get to try butterfly food and see what it tastes like. So um, this one, I definitely do not recommend drinking a whole cup of this. Um, but definitely take a sip and see what it tastes like. We're going to make some sugar water. So you've got your little portion cup of sugar right in front of you. Warning, do not add the entire cup of sugar to your cup. Maybe just do half. I'll just do half in mine. Or not even half. I only did like a fourth of mine. But I've got my sugar in the bottom of my cup. Now you're going to fill your cup with water. I've got some water next to me, but if you got to run to the faucet, you could do that. Fill that cup up with water. And then just stir it until that sugar is dissolved. You can use your straw to stir it. It smells just like water. It doesn't have a smell. <laughs> I might add a little more sugar to mine. Because it's Friday, right? We can drink a lot of sugar today. All right. And you're just going to stir, stir, stir until all of those sugar crystals are dissolved. You won't feel any grittiness at the bottom of your cup.
All right. And we'll wait. We'll wait to sip on it until we can all try it together. I haven't tried the sugar water yet, so I don't know how it's going to taste. I hope really sweet. All right, Leland, do you have your sugar water all ready? You can, I would pour maybe like half of it in. It's up to you. The more sugar you pour, the more sugar you have in your sugar water. So it's up to you. See, Tiana's giving it a try. How is it, Tiana? Sweet, tastes like sugar, right? Here, let me try mine. Yep, this just tastes like sugar and water. So, and you definitely take a few sips of that. That's kind of, it actually reminds me of what good sweet tea tastes like, just sugar water. All right, so the sugar water that you've made, actually, um, when you're finished with it, uh, like I said, I wouldn't recommend drinking it all, but you can do that if you want to. You can pour the rest of the sugar water, oh goodness, into your butterfly feeder, and then go ahead and hang it outside once we finish with our call today. So you've basically made yourself some butterfly food already. When you're pouring it into your butterfly feeder, you don't wanna fill your feeder all the way up, just, just a little bit in the bottom of the cup. Yes, Tiana, getting you hyper for mom. That's our goal this Friday morning. <laughs> All right, Anna, were you able to try yours? Yeah, it's tasty, right? <laughs> All right, guys, so the Sip Like a Butterfly is our last activity that we are doing together on this morning call, um, but we do have an activity later today that is another optional Zoom call. Uh, this is going to be the last call with me for the week. Um, and that is where we are actually going to play a game together. We're gonna play a game called Cootie. So if you guys show up, I'll teach you how to make the game that we actually have given you in your kit. And then we will play it all together and see who wins. Um, we also have some extra activities in your bag that you guys can do at home with your families. Uh, and we'll go over the instructions for those in that afternoon call. Um, does anybody have any questions for me before we go today? No? All right. Okay, guys, so thank you for coming to this Friday call. I was really happy to see some of you guys here with me. Um, if you wanna come and play Cootie with me later, uh, I would definitely love to see you there. Um, before I go, um, Ms. Uh, Fallon, do you have anything you wanna tell them? Mr. Toll and I always try to remind them to sign in guys to attendance if you didn't do any attendance. And then we actually are going to do, we don't normally do a Friday session, but today we're gonna do a Friday session in a few minutes. Hey. We have it scheduled. Yeah, we have it scheduled for 10 o'clock, but um, obviously we're in here right now. So as soon as we're done guys, <laughs> click onto that link. I'm gonna end the Zoom on this one so I can start their Zoom. But thank you again, Imaginarium. Wonderful. Thing Absolutely. And I always have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Same here for sure. Okay, guys. So you're definitely going to want to hop onto that other Zoom call um, with your regular teachers. They've got a session for you today. Uh, and we will see you next week. Have a good weekend.